Hey everyone, welcome back. In this ISTQB exam question and answers video, I'm going to cover another five ISTQB exam questions with detailed explanation. So let's go to the second set and the next five questions. So the question, first question of this video and question six of this particular set is which of the following statements is correct example of the value of traceability? Okay, value of traceability, correct state, correct example of the value of traceability. Now let's go through, through these four options and we understand or we try to figure out which statement is absolutely correct. So traceability between the mitigated risk, risks and passing test cases provides a means of determining the level of residual risk. Traceability between mitigated risks and passing test cases. Okay, so absolutely doesn't make any correlation there, right? So traceability between mitigated risks and the passing test cases provides a means of determining the level of residual risk. No, that doesn't determine the level of residual risk. Traceability between user requirements and test execution results provides a means of measuring project progress against business goals. Yes, that's what the traceability is all about. So basically here you'll see that we have requirements. So for example, we have requirement one. Okay. And then traceability between user requirements and test execution results. You'll see results is there, right? So test execution results as well. So requirement one has, say, for example, 10 test cases and there is a traceability matrix. So requirement one is mapped to 10 test cases. And then out of that, you know that against the requirement one, nine test cases have passed. Okay. Nine test cases have passed. One has failed. So that provides a means of measuring the project progress against business goals. Yes, absolutely. Because if you know that nine test cases have passed against a particular requirement on only one failed. So you know how the project progress is overall in terms of testing, right? In terms of overall development and the quality. So that is absolutely correct answer B. Let's go through the other options and eliminate the others. Tra traceability between testers, traceability between testers and failing test cases provide a means of determining the skill level of the testers. Between testers and failing test cases, no, no that's, that, uh, there is no such traceability between testers and failing test cases, right? So absolutely baseless statement. Traceability between the identified risks and written test conditions. Okay. So here, yeah, uh, C option there could be you, you, you can create that particular traceability uh, between the testers. For example, tester one has failed 20 test cases, right? But that traceability doesn't provide the it's not a mean of determining the skill level of tester right so even if you have this matrix that doesn't determine the skill level of tester so that's why this is incorrect traceability between the identified risks and written test conditions provides a means of determining which risks are worth testing so identified risks and written test condition so if you have a risk okay and traceability between uh, this identified risk and written test condition so you have for example, you know, 10 conditions to be tested, uh, provide a means of determining which risks are worth testing, right? So that traceability is not going to determine which one you are going to test, right? This traceability between risks and test cases doesn't determine which risks are worth testing, okay? So that is also incorrect. So correct one is between user requirement and test execution results will help to measure project progress against business goals. Okay, moving to the second question of this video, which of the following is most likely to be an example of a tester using a generic skill when testing? Okay, most likely example of a tester using generic skill. Now let's see these four options and select one option. Testers deep knowledge of a variety of computer games meant that they got on well with one of the developers who was also into gaming absolutely baseless right they're not here your your knowledge of computer game going well with the testers is not the generic skill that they are talking about right the tester was a former pilot and was better able to understand the acceptance criteria for the helicopter control system right so this is the close answer right so tester was a former pilot okay and was better able to understand the acceptance criteria so tester has a generic skill right so this is most likely the answer okay this is most likely to be an example of tester using generic skill when testing so that's because the tester was former pilot 
They were able to better understand the acceptance criteria for helicopter control system. Let's eliminate the others. This is the correct answer, but let's still go ahead and see others are absolutely baseless statements or incorrect statement. The tester previously worked as a programmer and used their skills in this area to better communicate with business analysts, right? Tester previously worked with a programmer and used their skills in this area. So in, in the area of programming to better communicate with business analysts that is not using generic skill in testing right this is something else so we can eliminate that the tester was very careful not to make mistakes when they method methodically generated test cases prior to starting their exploratory test session that's absolutely baseless and this is not a generic skill that they are talking about only generic skill we, we see is here which is which tester is using into understanding the acceptance criteria for or helicopter control system so B is the correct moving to the third question of this particular video which of the following is an advantage of the whole team approach okay so advantage of having whole team approach it allows team members to take on any role at any time not at all right that's not what whole team approach is anyone any team member cannot take any role at any time right that's absolutely incorrect statement about whole team approach so you can cross that out it only needs a single team to support the complete development project. No, that's absolutely baseless because to complete uh, the project might be massive and there might be multiple teams involved in completing or building that particular product. Okay, so that is also incorrect. It, you, you might need more than one team to support complete development project. Then third one is it embeds business representatives alongside developers in the same team. That's absolutely baseless as well. It whole team approach doesn't say that you embed business representatives alongside developers in the same team, right? There is a collaboration and coordination with business representatives, but there is not a embedding of business representatives alongside developers in the same team. Okay. So that's also incorrect and not a correct statement for whole team approach. So that leaves us with, with just one option, which is D and that should be correct. It generates a team synergy that benefits the entire project, right? This is the correct answer that it generates a team synergy that benefits the entire project. That's the whole team approach. Okay. So team works in a very collaborative and cooperative manner as part of the whole team approach, which creates the team synergy and benefits the whole project okay so that's the correct answer moving to the fourth question of this particular video which is question number nine of this particular set which of the following statements about the chosen software development life cycle is correct okay whatever sdlc you have chosen based on that which of these statements is correct and you have to choose one option if agile software development is used system test automation replaces the need for regression testing that's not correct okay doesn't matter if agile software development is used that doesn't mean that system test automation that you have will replace the need for regression testing okay that's 100 percent you cannot replace at all so that's why it is incorrect okay then the second one is if a sequence sequential development model is used then the dynamic testing is typically restricted to later in the life cycle so when we say it's sequential right so what they are saying is sequential development model is used for example waterfall okay so you have waterfall wherein you have requirement then you have design then you have development okay then you have testing okay wherein you have this test execution and all so what they are saying is dynamic testing so that is absolutely correct right so when when you are using sequential development model they are not talking about testing they are talking about dynamic testing right and dynamic testing does fall into the later in the is is basically restricted to the later in the life cycle right because here you the testing phase comes when the deployment happens of the code the development has happened and deployed in the into the test environment that's when the dynamic testing or the testers actually start using the application run the application and start testing so it does restrict if the sequential development model is used it does restrict the dynamic testing to the later in the life cycle which is absolutely correct so this is the correct answer we'll go through the others and eliminate those as well so if an iterative development model is used then components testing is typically performed manually by developers okay that's absolutely baseless it doesn't based on your development life cycle model that doesn't dictate 
or suggest how the testing will be performed by developers or by testers right so absolutely baseless if an incremental development model is used then static testing is done in early increments and dynamic testing is in later increments absolutely baseless even if an incremental model is used static and dynamic testing are part of that same increment okay so correct answer is b for the fourth question of this particular set Moving to the last question of this particular video, which of the following is a good testing practice that applies to all software development lifecycle, all SDLC models that you have? What is the good testing practice for all of those? So let's go through one by one and eliminate the ones that are absolutely incorrect. So testers should review work products as part of the next development phase. No, absolutely baseless. Testers should review work products as part of the next development phase no not at all they should review their work products as soon as possible right testers should review work products as soon as drafts are available yes that's the correct answer b testers should review work products as soon as drafts are available let's go to the other option and i'll explain these options as well and i eliminate we know that this is the correct answer but still i'll cover these testers should review work products before test analysis and design begins so you have this test analysis and design right so testers should review work products before test analysis and design begins no as soon as drafts are available so obviously this is anyways correct so as soon as the drafts are available you should start you should not wait for test analysis and design phases right testers should review work products immediately after they are published published no as soon as the drafts are available they should start reviewing it not wait for the final published documentation to be available because once you have the draft you will be able to provide input as a as a tester you will be able to provide input feedback on the work products that will help in identifying any gaps any defects issues within those documentation and then that can be fixed before actually getting published right so we have got this b as the correct answer and we just have to choose one option for this particular question okay so that's all for this particular video in the next video i'll cover another five exam questions for cert certified tester foundation level has exam that's all for this video i hope it was helpful see you in the next one thank you